the Exchequer, Dennis Healy, revelled in the fun of the political game. And as his son Tim explains, he was always happy to play the fool at home. One refrain from my mother rang all through my childhood. Whenever Dad was larking around, whether it was on or off screen, the cry was, Dennis, don't! Dennis Healy. As Chancellor of the Exchequer, people have referred to him as the best Prime Minister we never had. That's what it means and that's what I'm asking for. That's what I'm going to negotiate for. And I ask the conference to support me in my part. My father was uh, irrepressible. This is the house in North London where my sisters Jen, Cress and I spent most of our childhood. The owner's kindly letting me in so I can take another look. Wow, the configuration is pretty much the same. And in some strange way, the ambience is the same. Dad had this fantastic lust for life. One of his things was, with any visiting friends of ours, he'd grab them by the arms and whirling them around at ferocious speed. My mother, in the background, always present. Dennis, don't. He was just an MP in the early days, bright young Labour MP on the up. In 1964, Harold Wilson made him Defence Secretary. Ten years after that, he became Chancellor of the Exchequer and the next move was to 11 Downing Street. He did a lot of good stuff. The most important thing, really, was keeping the British economy afloat during a very, very troubled period. He did um, acknowledge there was a streak in himself of what he called brutal facetiousness. He was a great photographer, and uh, although he was a big, florid personality, nonetheless, uh, I think a lot of quieter tenderness comes through. Nice little one here, I think, we've got of uh, us building a snowman in the back garden. He loved the outdoor life. He loved the family camping holidays he took us on. We discovered uh, recently that his, uh, the paper girl who delivered here was uh, one Sarah McCauley, better known today, perhaps, as Sarah Brown, the wife of the former Prime Minister, Gordon Brown. This is the first time I've been this far into the house. I'd have been doing this paper round when I was at the beginning of secondary school, so age 12, 13 years old. All those papers would really stack up, and on a Sunday it was the super bumper pile. And for your dad, I think he ordered every single newspaper there was available. Do you miss the limelight? I think having been in the public eye, it never quite goes away entirely. And I was Sarah McCauley when I did this paper round, and I'm still Sarah McCauley in my head, but yeah. there's an awful lot of Mrs Brown when you're at number yeah. 11, number 10. Yeah. Do you remember, did Dad tip at Christmas? But I can't believe, having met your dad in more recent years, that he wouldn't have been a great tipper. Dad was a really keen swimmer and often brought us here to the Lido. He needed to unwind, and one of his great joys was swimming. No. He loved to entertain. My sister made a murder mystery film involving uh, all of us, and Mum and Dad threw themselves into their parts with typical relish. He really loved television. Uh, can't think of many other major political figures who would have coped so well with playing piano in a TV special. And he really relished being taken off by the Impressionist Mike Yarwood. Yes, Harold and I had lots of fun in those days, even though we hardly had any money. Later, he made me Chancellor of the Exchequer, and we had even less money. <laughs> we used to love walking on Hampstead Heath, with Dad yodelling out his favourite theme tune for our jaunts, the entry of the clowns, that famous circus music theme. The views from Parliament Hill Fields are absolutely fantastic. The skyline has changed enormously since I was a boy. Dad died at 98, two years short of his 100th birthday, and uh, I think it was his great ambition, actually, even more than to be Prime Minister, was to live to 100. He didn't quite make it, but uh, two years on, we're there now, so I can say it. Happy birthday, Dad. 
Wow, thank you. Thank you, Tim, for sharing those lovely memories Such with Such a beautiful us. film. He's inherited the eyebrows, hasn't he? Yeah, he and has. And the voice as well. It says a lot about him, actually, that although he must have had an incredibly stressful life at work, that those are the memories, memories. that Tim has as, yeah. a, as a dad at home. Beautiful. What was it like?